Welcome back to TK Tennis. So let's take a look at what happened in Francis TFO's match in Shanghai. And for the end of this video, remember this quote, quote, he doesn't have a pot to piss in. And why this incident may be more than just a flare up or an incident with the chair umpire. Let's take a look. Now, as we start the video, you're gonna watch Francis TFO here walking up to the baseline and he's going to toss the ball up. He walks up, time toss, violation, loss of sir, Mr. and he gets a time violation. No, bro, I toss the ball, ready, sir. I'm not buying this. It's a second serve now, okay? And you heard the umpire just say, I'm not buying this. He knew Francis is not doing this in good faith. Se toss the ball, ready, sir. Serve. Second serve. Dude, that's the rule. The ball goes up, how am I not ready to serve? Second, Second serve. serve. Now Francis handled that pretty well. He didn't get that upset about it, and he still had a second serve. So let's take a look at the next point. So we hit a good second serve. He had several opportunities to win that point. And if I didn't mention it before, obviously he, from the time violation, he wasn't allowed to hit a first serve and he forfeited his first serve and had to hit a second serve. But he had multiple chances to win that point. Now let's take a look at match point. Game set, match up here. And just like that, the match is over. And here's where the F-bombs start to fly. Six. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Seriously, man. Now, if you were counting, that was a barrage of 11 F-bombs. But more importantly, did you hear that quote that he said at the end? I'm out here for three hours fighting for my livelihood. Now, you might be thinking, well, he's a top 30, top 20 tennis player, and he makes millions of dollars. And that's somewhat true. But is he really fighting for his livelihood? And you're probably thinking, he's not fighting for his livelihood. He has plenty of money. Let's take a look at that. Does he really? So let's take a look at his earnings. This year, his win-loss is 30 and 22, and he's made $2.5 million in prize money. Of course, doesn't, that does not include his sponsorships. But his career is 207 and 187, so he's a little bit over 500. So he wins maybe 55, 60% of, of his matches. And his total earnings prize money, $12,773,000. So, so you might be thinking, that's a shit ton of money. He has plenty of money, plus his sponsorships. But t bear in mind, he's turned pro in 2015, so he's been on the pro tour for nine years. And when you factor in, when you have a coach, a physio, all your travel, all your hotels, everything that these players pay for on their own dime, and that includes, includes their coaching, their food, their physio, top players like this could easily be paying more than a million dollars their career on a yearly basis they're probably spending well over a million dollars just to get around the world and to train and to pay their coaches and so forth now you remember that quote i said quote he doesn't have a pot to piss in that comes from someone very close to francis tfo himself and that quote was told to me directly last year now do i know if that's true or not or if that's just hyperbolic it might be but this source, again, is very close to Francis. And you can easily imagine if he has a large entourage, which he does. And listen, Francis is not the only athlete in the world that has this problem. There are hundreds of athletes that don't manage their money well. And I have no proof that he doesn't manage his money well. 
other than the source that I have. But you can easily see it as a tennis player who has to travel the world for nine years, spending well over a million dollars a year, plus his sponsorship money, and he's living large. You can easily blow through this money very quickly. So does he have a pot to piss in? I'm sure he does. I'm sure he's doing okay. So that's just a little bit of additional context on this claim at the end of this match where he feels like he got cheated out of the match. So even though the umpire was well within the rules to call a time violation in, on TFO, and TFO was clearly in the wrong, at least as I see it. But when you think about it, when he gets angry and with all these F-bombs, you might be seeing why that is. Because to Francis, every match win in a Masters 1000 event or any large tournament is a lot of money lost. And maybe he truly is fighting for his livelihood. Now, I'm not excusing Francis's behavior. He dropped 11 F-bombs, and boy, those were angry F-bombs. But here's also the next problem. You're seeing a lot of bad behavior on the tour from Rublev, from Medvedev, and TFO, and there's no accountability. There's no consequences. Rublev last year was defaulted from a match and was supposedly lost his prize money and his points, but that was reinstated two weeks later. So when you see something like this happens, Francis believes there's probably nothing that's going to happen to me. So we're getting to an epidemic or an, a culture of bad behavior because there's no accountability for these players. So while Francis is clearly in the wrong, we're going to see what's going to actually happen to him. What kind of punishment will there actually be? Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next ace. And remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.